Talk a little bit more about um, all of what we saw today and what we've been seeing. Veronica Dagger joins us from the Wall Street Journal. Good to see you, Veronica. Doug Flynn, Flynn Zito, Capital Management, is with us this afternoon as well. And uh, I know, Doug, you deal with individual investors, and uh, obviously these are uh, nerve-wracking times for many of them and all of us. What types of conversations do you have, even on a day like this? Because it seems like the speed of the movements, one way or the other, is just catching just about everybody off guard. It is. Today represents the uh, eighth day in a row we've had more than 4% swings, either up or down. That breaks the record of all time, uh, more than 4% moves ever. So it's unnerving. And the conversations we're really having are, there's really three things that you can do right now. One is really to do nothing. Uh, two is to just, whatever you thought was good for you long term about a month ago is probably still good long term and maybe just rebalance right now back to it. Right. Or the third thing you could do is make a decision. Do I get in or get out? And typically, if you're going to get out, those are the decisions when you make them under duress that you come to regret later on, especially in a free fall that we're going on right now where the market's just trying to find its bottom. Right. And that's the search for the bottom. Caveat to all of those, of course, depends on your personal situation, as we always say, how old you are, Veronica, and everything else. But people are... Nervous and it seems like they're waiting. We're going to talk more about this in a moment in, in terms of details for Washington to do something. But even when Washington does something, it doesn't help us with the timeline necessarily of how we get through this, right? Right, because we don't know how far or how deep this recession, if we're going to go into it, it looks like it, uh, how long it's going to go on for. You know what? And you can only do so many fiscal and monetary measures, you know, at the end of the day, people really want some sort of vaccine, some sort of cure for this. Um, and that's something that the federal government can't do through monetary measures. Um, you know, in terms of investors, though, I think individual investors, we're seeing it in the numbers so far, have been pretty disciplined, not making big moves. We're seeing most of the big moves in the market from the professional investors and the algo traders. If you're an in Vigil investor and you don't need the money for the foreseeable future, you know what, try not to open that 401k because as we know, when you panic, people tend to not make good decisions. If right. you are in a situation that you're losing or you're afraid to lose your job and a lot of your money is tied up in stocks in your brokerage account and you don't have that three to six months worth of expenses, then maybe you want to get some of that money out so you have that three to six month worth of emergency we fund at definitely the definitely saw it even on the professional level, that search for cash today. And just a, right. as Christina was talking about that, all kinds of asset classes that were being sold off, Doug, a quick word on that. Just everybody seemed to need or want cash, depending on their situation. Yeah, there, that, that's the, uh, you know, you, uh, this is a sort of a fight or flight kind of thing that people are feeling right now. And we're just about down to the average, which is 36% down. Average recessions go down 36%. We're almost there. So we're right about the point where you look to do the average. But that, that's when people typically want uh, the maximum uh, flight, basically where we are. Do I get out? You know, I'll bring Melissa in here for a moment and just tell everybody what we're doing. There's going to be a playback, Melissa, right from President Trump in just a few seconds, who's meeting with those nurses. And um, maybe we yeah. get some more on what we're expecting out of of Washington, or at least on how the response is being handled. Right? Yeah, I mean, he faced a lot of questions today about the number of ventilators out there and the number of masks. And um, let's listen in and see what he has to say. Well, thank you very much. And today I welcome the great nurses of our country to the White House and express our gratitude for those on the front lines in our war against the global pandemic. And it's been something, but uh, we're winning and we will win. It's a question of when, and I think it's going to go quickly. We hope it's going to go quickly. I think we all agree. We're glad to be joined by Vice President Mike Pence, Secretary Alex Azar, Administrator Seema Verma, Dr. Robert Redfield, and Dr. Deborah Burks, thank you all very much for being here. Thank you very much. We're using the full power of government in response to the Chinese virus. I declared a state of national emergency that will make up to $50 billion in disaster relief funds available, which we can use to assist hospitals, which, as you know, we need. I asked states to set up emergency operation centers and hospitals to activate emergency plans, and they've been uh, fully notified. We're urging hospitals to cancel all elective medical procedures. My emergency declaration allowed us to waive regulations to give nurses and doctors maximum flexibility to respond to the virus. 
and to protect our frontline professionals that we've authorized through telehealth nationwide, which is really becoming uh, big stuff, telehealth. Makes it a lot easier for patients and uh, really has been working out amazingly well. We empowered states to authorize tests developed in their state, and we are working with the private sector to rapidly expand testing capacity. A, we have literally rebuilt that whole system. It was an obsolete system and has been rebuilt, and a lot of good things are happening. We've ordered 500 million N95 masks to drive private production. American manufacturers are repurposing factories. One major manufacturer has already doubled capacity, and we've asked construction companies to donate unused masks. And they have actually quite a few of them, the construction companies. Who would think that? But they're going to be uh, donating unused masks, and the Defense Department is making millions of masks available for healthcare workers. And we're asking every American to make major changes to reduce social interactions over the next two weeks. As we all know, we must make uh, shared sacrifices, and that's what we're doing as a country. Uh, it's been amazing to see the way the country has come together. There's tremendous spirit, and even Republicans and Democrats are getting together, for the most part, but they're getting together. So that's a good thing to see. I thought maybe I'd go around the room and we'll just say uh, your name and uh, who you're representing, and uh, it's great to have you. Thank you very much. Please. I'm Dr. Debbie Hatmaker. I'm the Chief Nursing Officer for the American Nurses Association. Great. Right. Thank you, Debbie. I'm Dr. Suzanne Miyamoto. I'm the CEO of the American Academy of Nursing. Thank you. Uh, I'm Dave Hebert. I'm the CEO of the American Association of Nurse Practitioners. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Hi, Mr. President. I'm Dr. Deborah Troutman. I'm the President and CEO for the American Association of Colleges of Nursing. Great. Hello. Hello. I am uh, Teresa Davis, and I'm a Clinical Operations Director in an EICU, but I am representing the American Association of Critical Care Nurses. Thank you very much. Great. Hi, I'm Ron Krause. I'm the 2021 National President for the Emergency Nurses Association. Thank you very much. Hello, Mr. President. I'm Robin Begley, the CEO of the American Organization for Nursing Leaders and the CNO for the American Hospital Association. Thank you very much. I know who he is. Mike, do you have anything to say? Well, just, uh, Mr. President, I just want to join you in welcoming uh, these, uh, these great healers to the White House. Uh, uh, the President spoke today to the leaders of physician organizations from around the country. We garnered from them uh, recommendations about how we can further support um, those of you that are coming alongside Americans that are impacted by the coronavirus. Uh, and as the President said, uh, we are absolutely committed um, to, um, uh, to bringing the full resources of the federal government, the full resources of the American economy, to work with states across the country, uh, to be there for Americans struggling with the coronavirus, but on, at the same level of priority, the President's made it clear that we are to make sure that the men and women who are serving those patients, and the nurses, the nurse practitioners, the emergency room nurses, so well represented here around the country, are in the forefront of the President's mind. And as he said, uh, we've taken decisive steps. We're, we've, uh, we've enabled the expansion availability of N95 masks, and Congress has worked in a bipartisan way to make those more available. We're working on gowns and gloves and all of the personal protective equipment that all of you rely on every day. And I look forward to the discussion today about how we might be most helpful, but, but I hope you will carry back uh, the gratitude of, of uh, your president and of our entire team on the White House Coronavirus Task Force for the work that all of your members are doing every single day. They are the hands and feet of American compassion, and every American is grateful to, to our nurses. Thank you, Mike. And uh, just for the media, uh, FEMA is fully engaged. Uh, they're, uh, we're uh, working with them very closely. They're going around. They're seeing many of the states. They're engaged all over the country, but some areas have uh, far greater problems than others. Some areas don't have very much of a problem at all, as you know. But FEMA is very much engaged. They're fully engaged as of about two hours ago. And tomorrow we're having a uh, what I think will be a very interesting news conference. Uh, and uh, I think you know what that's all about. So we'll see. The FDA will be uh, — they've been working very, very hard. And I appreciate what they're doing. And I think we have some 
and very interesting things that will be brought up tomorrow at the news conference. It'll be set up, I think, at around 11 o'clock or so. But we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. All right. Uh, President Trump moments ago at the White House meeting with a group of um, nurses there, giving us a preview as well of what we might see in part tomorrow. While that was happening, the Senate uh, did pass that stimulus bill that came out of the House. Want to go to Chad Pergram on on Capitol Hill. And to be clear, this is not the so-called phase three of trillion dollar stimulus we've been talking about so much the last few days. This is the one that we almost forgot about that came before that. Right. That's right. This is phase two. The vote was 90 to eight. And now the House and Senate have aligned on that bill that the House approved in the wee hours of Saturday morning. But that underscores the challenge that faces uh, Democrats and Republicans in the Senate as they try to put together phase three. The fact that it took from Saturday morning until Wednesday afternoon just to get that through, and that was supposed to be the easy bill, that tells you a lot as they try to work on phase three. There's a lot of concern about the cost of phase three. Here's Republican South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. Am I worried about the price tag? You pay now or you pay later. If we don't contain this virus, the entire economy is going to collapse. There's disagreement from senators on both sides of the aisle about direct payments to citizens. Not all of the more than $1 trillion is new money. Much of it is tax breaks. But Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer is concerned about how much money people will get if they're off the job. A single $1,000 check would help someone pay their landlord in March. But what happens after that? How do they pay their rent in April when their office or restaurant or store is still closed for business? How about May? How about June? have to negotiate with Democrats like Schumer as well as House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. John Cornyn, Republican senator from Texas, said earlier this afternoon, quote, what I'm more worried about than anything is that this may not be the end. In other words, whatever they pass sometime in the next two or three days, if they can get it together that fast, that might not be the end. And that's going to be more than a trillion dollars. And Chris Coons, a Democratic sen uh, senator from Delaware, he indicates that uh, businesses are on the phone with him, Amtrak Airlines, saying we need to see action from Congress right now because we need, need to make decisions this week about furloughs and cuts. It's not going to be in a month. We need to understand what Congress is doing so we can make those decisions this week. Connell, Melissa. Right. They want to see how it's structured on that phase three. That's for sure. Chad, thank you. Chad Pergam on Capitol Hill. Melissa. Let's bring Veronica and Doug back now to react. Um, Doug, what do you think of what you just heard? Well, I, 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 is Schumer saying he wants to spend a few more trillion dollars? Right, I, I'm not exactly shocking. sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, look, I think that some of the things they're trying to do are helpful. I think, you know, if you go with the payroll tax, if you're not working, you're not getting the money. But if you do give people some money out the gate, that might help. We, this is not a long thing we have to get through. We do have to get to the other side of the mountain. And when we do, th there are some good prospects on the other side of that. But we're just living in the moment right now of all this negative news every minute by minute. And so all this stuff is helpful. I think business is doing a great, great job. People are doing a great job. Government's doing its job. And so hopefully all together we can get through this and get on the other side. That's when you'll see some improvement. Yeah. I mean, Veronica, if there's an emergency, the last people I want to wait on is Congress. I mean, it, it, I think it is the slowest moving body of any type in, in our country. I, I'm trying to think of something that's slower, maybe the mail, but that's government too. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's just you want executive order. People are terrified. They need relief. How are they doing? They got to move on this, right? They need the money now. Americans need the money now. The good news is it sounds like Americans are going to get some sort of check. I don't know how big it's going to be. I guess it depends on the size of your family, how much you make. Looks like you're going to get some money. And that's going to be a welcome relief to a lot of yeah. Americans who are, as you say, terrified. You need to pay your rent. You need to pay your u utilities. you got to feed your kids. You need this money today, yeah. not three months from now. Yeah. No, it's true. I mean, I talk to a lot of people every day who are now out about two weeks' worth of pay. And so they just... They don't, they don't know how they're going to do anything. They're really terrified. And these guys screw around for a week. It's nothing to them. It's a lot to everyone else. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Connell. Sure. All right. Um, 